While the rest of Mexico celebrated the victory of Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, this small town went about its business. That's because elections are banned here. No, aquí no llegan las casillas. De hecho, se ha llegado a decomisar propaganda eh, partidista y eh, le hemos dado a saber a todo, no sé, a todo el Estado, a todo México, que aquí pues no, no son bien recibidos pues ningún tipo de proselitismo. Charan sits in the northwest portion of Michoacán. The state is overrun by violent crime and political corruption, but not here. Charan's 20,000 residents solved those problems by kicking out politicians, cops, and its mayor. Todo lo malo que sucedía antes, antes del 2011, era pues gracias a los partidos políticos porque pues tal vez por obtener el poder y eso eh, se corrompían y incluso pues vendían a nuestra comunidad con el crimen organizado y demás. Strict rules forbid political parties and campaigning within the town limits. Even motorists entering Charan have to remove party bumper stickers. Hemos visto y estamos viendo que se logra muchísimo más en todos los aspectos si dejamos fuera a los partidos políticos. Entonces, pues sí me gustaría que la gente de todo el país o de la región o Pues sí, mínimo, ¿no? El Estado se pusiera a pensar en eso de que pues nos puede ir mucho mejor sin los partidos políticos, o sea que no los necesitamos para nada y yo creo que eso ya está comprobado aquí en Cherán. Cherán also hasn't had a murder, kidnapping or disappearance in seven years. Minor offenses like theft, drunk driving and disorderly conduct are dealt with by imposing community service. One way the town curtailed crime was limiting access. Three entry checkpoints are staffed by guards with assault rifles and body armor. They're part of a homegrown patrol system in charge of protecting the town. That includes Andres Fabian. Los más importantes para mí serían primero en cuestiones de seguridad. Se han se ha logrado este pues digamos que eliminar los delitos que antes se cometían aquí como Lo que viene siendo pues el crimen organizado o delincuencia organizada. The town's transformation began in 2011 after a group of women decided to drive away illegal loggers. Uh, pues yo me siento bien. ¿Por qué? Porque bueno, no nomás las mujeres porque participamos mujeres, pero los hombres también participaron, pero los que empezaron las mujeres, ¿verdad? Y no uno nomás pues sino todo el pueblo. ¿Eh? Todo el pueblo se mandó. Witnesses rang the town bells to alert the community, and this set off an uprising that became known as the chiming. Y si no van las campanas, no, no se comunicó ni se dijo, vamos a hacer esto, vamos a hacer el otro, no, no se dijo, uh-uh, no se dio organizado, o sea, fue, ¿cómo te voy a decir? Fue una sorpresa. Up until this point, the town had been overrun by the loggers, who harassed and threatened residents. Los Pues a muchos los desaparecieron, a muchos los asesinaron, los levantaron y nunca se supo hasta ahorita, nunca se supo ya más de esas personas. Today, Charan is governed by its residents with strict rules and guidelines based on their indigenous Purepecha roots. Se hicieron varios borradores de cómo de cómo formar la estructura de gobierno. Sabíamos también que de, de nuestros antepasados ya se, ya se gobernaban de esa manera. Entonces esa esa fue la manera en que nosotros iniciamos a a organizarnos para tener esta forma de gobierno nuevamente. Each block in Charan discusses their issues at a community bonfire. Then they elect Geris or representatives like Enerino Santa Clara to bring these issues to the General Assembly. Desde nuestras fogatas, desde nuestros barrios, desde las barricadas y con la ronda comunitaria. Pero normalmente todos nos damos la protección. 
en ese sentido. Es, es donde vemos este, pues unos avances eh, grandes ¿no? y exitosos para nosotros. The community has also been slowly restoring the forest and nursing tree seedlings in a community garden. A mí me gustaría que nuestra gente, nuestras futuras generaciones fueran aprendiendo precisamente esta, esta forma de vida y que lo fueran poniendo en práctica y sobre todo que tuviéramos ese amor, se pudiera decir, por, por la naturaleza. Charan has become an example for other communities across Mexico. In 2018, 32 towns boycotted the presidential elections. Others are now looking to replicate its success against crime and corruption. Hay una frase que personas eh, externas a la comunidad vienen y nos la dicen, que se podría cheranizar a México, o cuando menos a Michoacán. Entonces, ¿qué nos dan a entender con eso? Que todas las poblaciones pueden hacerlo... Lo que está haciendo Cherán de rechazar y pues de no dejar este, que los partidos políticos se apoderen de, pues de los recursos. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? And we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CatMuff, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CatMuff, because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theconsciousresistance.com and solpodcast.org. So Peaceful Anarchism is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information for this at bipcot.org. So today I'm delighted to have Roy Duarte, who's coming in from Morelia, Mexico, and he's an anarchist. And he, uh, you can find him on uh, Instagram at Roy Z Nuff, Roy Z N U F, uh, and then on Facebook Roy Duarte. And then um, he's working with uh, another guy, Chris Harrigan, um, making a uh, documentary on a, a, a small town in Mexico called Cheran. And the documentary is going to be called Anarchopocalypse. And uh, it's about this this town and how it's uh, came to be stateless and how they resist the Aztecs and uh, remain stateless to this day. And it's a wonderful story. So looking forward to hearing about that. So um, Roy, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me, man. Yeah, no problem. I I heard you on uh, on Jeff Berwick's Anarchast, and I'm really impressed by this place and uh, what these people have done to maintain their sovereignty, their freedom. And uh, it's, that, it seems like a story that needs to be heard by uh, by many people. So yeah, I'm looking forward to you uh, sharing it with my my listeners. Um, so yeah, please before we get into that, uh, just talk about your background a little bit and how you came to anarchism. Of course. Um, well, how I came to anarchism uh, when Jeff asked me that question, and I didn't really know the answer. I mean, like, I've always had problems with authority since, I don't know, um, kindergarten, even before that. <laughs> yeah, man. 
Uh, but I do remember something that happened uh, during uh, middle school, I guess, something like that. I remember we were, we had to do these um, kind of like calligraphy exercises. We just had to repeat some words. Nobody wanted to do it, and there were some other uh, guys on our from our classroom having fun outside. So I just asked the teacher, like, why do we have to do this? And she t she 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 tells tells me like, just because. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, um, well. I'm not going to do anything and I'm going to do whatever the, the hell I want. <laughs> and so she asked me, why would you do that? Just because. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so, so I guess things kind of like started since, since that somehow. And well, I've, I've just realized it's just better when people is minding their own business, you know, and uh, not getting involved in someone else's stuff. And uh, it's all based on respect and uh, self-responsibility. So um, I'm very glad I'm an anarchist, man. Life is good, and I enjoy it a lot this way. So, so when did you like um, consider like call yourself an anarchist? When did you start calling yourself an anarchist? Um, I think when I looked up for the definition, and uh, I think well, I think also my headmaster called me uh, an anarchist, and but somehow. I, sh I should have like worried about that but at the beginning it sounded kind of cool it felt kind of cool so i was like okay am i really an anarchist i'm gonna look it up so basically it, i mean like yeah anarchism is just um no rulers yeah and uh yeah it's it's not my way to roll man i've never had bosses or empl or like you know i've never wanted to be the boss as well just wanted to make my own thing mm. so i i think since then something like that yeah yeah, it's um, yeah, it's very true that uh, that the word anarchism and, and or anarchy has negative connotation. You know, when you say it to people, they you know think of violence and um, you know, malt of cocktails and explosions and bombs and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah. and so when I first made my website um, and, and YouTube channel, um, I you know I um, was careful to put the word peaceful in there so people can uh, <laughs> you know dispel any doubt as to what I'm referring to when I say anarchist because if you just say anarchist they probably think that you with like Antifa and uh. you want to go and like uh, you know destroy a Starbucks window and steal <laughs> steal steal clothes from like a merchandise store you know <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah yeah, people don't. I mean, like most people have it very wrong with semantics nowadays, man. It's it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So that's I I find just that word peaceful clears up a lot of things. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like that. <laughs> right. So yeah. so yeah, I I really find that it helps. And and my wife, she's a lot happier now that I put the word peaceful in there because she was a little bit worried with the word anarchist. But but yeah, like you said, it's nothing to be worried about. It's just a person who. Who doesn't want to be ruled and doesn't want their neighbor to be ruled? You know, it's like the same freedom that I want for myself. In order for me to be consistent, I must want that for my neighbor as well, right? So, so, so you know, there, there's um, you know, Larkin Rose often says that just being an anarchist does not necessarily make you a good person, and that's true. Like, you know, it could be yeah. a, like could be like a you know serial killer, or rapist, or whatever. You know, saying I'm an anarchist, but I want to, control, <laughs> but I want to control you. I don't want rulers for myself, but I want to control you <laughs> and make you my slave. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not so consistent, but <laughs> all right. Yeah, there's no consistency there, man. <laughs> so, so you gotta have some some principles some somewhere in there. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so please get into um, Chiran and uh, you know the history of it and how it came to be the way it is today. Well, Chiran, this little town, um, the place is beautiful, man. It's in between the mountains of the state of Michoacan. Um, it's 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 like a forest. Chris Harrigan told me it reminded him of the forests in Canada, something people wouldn't normally expect from Mexico. Hmm. But, well, the place is amazing. Um, so it's just a small little town that has been there for probably thousands of years, uh, as we've been told. And... They are also very spiritual. Their most ancient um, spots in the town, uh, it's, it's all related to, well, their beliefs, you know, which are some, some, uh, some rocks that have some scripts in them and stuff. And, and, well, 
it also the story uh, developed with the Purépecha Empire. They 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 call themselves Purépecha, which is like the the people from the from the area, the state of Michoacán, and they have been well. They're known to be kind of well, very contentious, but not invasive though, which is different. Um, mm. They're not conquerors. They just want to live life their way, basically. Right. Um. They did have some problems with the Aztecs before the Spanish came. The Aztecs were just the imperialistic guys in the neighborhood, and uh, they just wanted to destroy everything and rebuild it their own way. Mm. And I, ironically, they just got destroyed and things got rebuilt in a Spanish way. But, and, but the thing with the Aztecs and the Purépecha people is that they tried to invade them constantly. The Aztecs invaded several other people um, what used to be the Mayans in the south, uh, people in Oaxaca, uh, several, several, um, well, se- several groups of people in what's Mexico now, and they never got to conquer the Purépechas. Actually, they uh, there was a time in which they tried to attack the Purépechas, but then they 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 repealed the attack and followed them to one of their cities, and they. They just, uh, how do you say it in English, when you go to a city, take everything from there, and then like go back. Pillage or plunder. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so they did that. Um, apparently, they're guys you don't want to mess with. And, well, the Aztecs, well, they, they never managed to do anything. And also, well, the Aztecs were very, 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 very hated during, um, uh, during well, actually... People from no, even I mean like the Aztecs, the Aztec, um, how do you call it? Uh, the the main city of the Aztecs is Mexico City nowadays. And nobody in Mexico likes people from Mexico City, hmm. and everyone from Mexico thinks people from Michoacán, which is the state in which Cheran and the Purépecha people are, think it's it's very dangerous and people is well very you know moody and contentious and stuff. But hmm. well. It depends. If you want to do something to them, they're going to react. Mm. You know, they're not just going to stand there. But yeah, the thing is that they repealed the Aztecs several times. And then when the Spanish people came, yeah, the Spanish had a huge advantage because they had technology. They had a military knowledge from the old world. So the Purépecha were very aware of that. But they uh, the, the, they reached an agreement with the Spanish, and the Spanish actually wanted to do that because they knew it was going to be very, very hard to conquer them. Mm-hmm. And actually, they, they didn't got conquered, um, you know. What, what, what happened actually was that they reached an agreement. Uh, the Spanish gave them some land and, well, the Spanish got some land and the Purépecha got some other land to do whatever they wanted. Uh, of course, there were some Europeans that wanted to take advantage of them. And there were some other Europeans that wanted to help them. One of them was called uh, Vasco de Quiroga. But there was a, um, a former leader that got killed. And then the Purépecha, re- um, uh, they revealed against the, the Spanish. And it was like a five to ten year war or something. Uh, I'm not sure about the dates. I think I read that somewhere. But the thing is, it was a huge problem for the Spanish. These people caused some huge losses and problems for them. And nowadays, uh, with the with what is the Mexican government? <sighs> this one was uh, the history just repeating itself, trying to mess with people they shouldn't mess with. Hmm. So what so what happened is that um, political parties they they separated a lot a lot of people in towns. So basically, what happened? Well, this also happened in Charan. And uh, so what was happening is that since everyone was separated by the government and political parties, nobody got together to provide a solution for problems that were happening. And government was was supposed to solve them, but nobody was solving them because government. Well, people in government didn't really care. Actually, they did the quite opposite. They they just created more problems, make things way worse by making deals with organized crime. And organized crime, they saw all of the all of the wealth in in the in the forests and the mountains of Charan. So they just 
hired some loggers and they start logging the forests down. The, the, the deforestation that was taking place was awful. Um, it's it's being reforested now, but you can still see some bald spots in the mountains. And um, and when we saw the the pictures they showed us, it was it was awful, man. And getting those people inside of like someone else's homeland, it was awful um, because actually you know their life depended on the trees because the trees were captating water. And well, as humans, we kind of need water to survive. So that's basically how things started like going bad in Cheran. And there were people who were standing up to the to the organized crime loggers. And they were just asking them, like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to my house? I haven't done anything to you. And this is not fair. And, well, those people got disappeared, some killed. Um, and, and the organized crime, when they were asked that, they were constantly replying, uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, after this, we're going to go to, we're going to go for your women, for your sisters, your mothers, daughters, whatever. So that's, when things uh, got 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 tough, and in I, I believe it was April fifteenth of two thousand eleven, it was when when the whole thing started. Well, it was the night before that. They were handing these little papers um, among the community, and the information within these papers was that they were gonna stop things. You know, just uh, they were not letting uh, these this, this criminals, government and uh, cartel, to take advantage of them. So on these little papers, they were telling people, tomorrow at 6 a.m., we're going to ring the bells of all the churches in town, and we're just going to get the loggers, take their things, kick them out of town. So that actually happened. But... What's what's really amazing here is that when they actually did that, okay, so it's 6 a.m., the bells from the churches start ringing, they start launching firecrackers and stuff, and uh, they told me normally when that happens, it's because it's there's something going on, something big and something important. So at 6 a.m., it was super unusual. And what, what happens after that is that the, the, the trucks from the... Um, from the organized crime that was that were uh, fully loaded with logs, were coming down from the mountains. So some ladies, some small ladies, they stop these trucks. They take the people out of the of them, and uh, these were heavily armed guys. They had machine guns and stuff because they were they were cartel people. But the the, the people who were stopping them, they had nothing but sticks, uh, machetes, a couple of 22s, and that's it. But they just took them out of their cars. They they beat it the hell out of them, and they were I believe they were trying to hang them in the tree in in a small um, plaza, but actually they well they they hanged them but they didn't kill them, and they they kicked them out. Hmm. So after kicking all the criminals out of town, they realized uh, that they were coming back. Things were not going to stay that way, so they take guns from the police. They kicked police out. Um, the the mayor at the time, they, uh, he was exiled. I think he just passed away uh, like four or five weeks ago. I don't know. And they organized themselves uh, in the in the following way: women were inside of town feeding children and old people by establishing fireplaces in every corner of the street. And men were outside in the woods, taking care no one would get inside from from those from from those spots. Hmm. So since then, they have been organizing um, their 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 way of living themselves. And there was a proposal to actually have some kind of system because they are you uh, they're used to have kind of like government, but they don't want the Mexican government. So they want everything to be voluntary. So they propose something to people. And their proposal was to do things the way their ancestors did. And um, if the people accepted that, 
they would do it. If not, they will they would look for something else. And so they, they made that proposal to the people in the town, they accepted it. And the the way things work right now is that there is a mayor council that it's kind of like selected by the people in town. They made a consensus. Somehow it's more complex. I'm not very well informed about that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's some kind of consensus. But anyway, the thing is they get elected uh, by that process and people just select the people that they think will be good doing the, the job that the community needs to, to be done. Like, uh, you know, uh, roads, water, electricity and stuff, just dealing with those kind of things. And, of course, getting rid of political parties. So what happened is that they ended up saving a huge, huge, huge amount of money. Oh, and the people that got selected uh, as members of the mayor council, uh, they were not, uh, they're not able to, to be part of the council again. And their position is voluntary. If they don't want to do it, uh, it's all right. If they want to do it, well, they're welcome to do so. And I do believe they do not get paid. Mm. Hmm. Very cool. So, so, yeah, so very different from a politician then. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and they're also open to other systems of, organiza- or, of organizing themselves. Because they told me that even if the ways of their ancestors didn't work, mm-hmm. they would open to just do something else. And uh, I mean, like, while I was there, because we spent like one week, uh, uh, well, first it was a, uh, a trip with, with Jeff Berwick and Luke Radowski, Bob Stanley, Jacob Sula, uh, Chris Harrigan, of course. And uh, Jeff's wife and her friend. And, well, it was just for a day. We didn't got to see a lot of things. But what we really noticed is it was uh, that we just were into the most peaceful town we've ever been in in our whole, in our whole lives, you know. Hmm. People were, you know, just chilling, smiling, kids playing with a ball on the streets, um, families together. I mean, everyone, I, that, that was something interesting, man, because... Everyone was just smiling and having a good time. They didn't look concerned about anything. And, well, the food was amazing. We had these these tacos called, uh, made out of this thing called carnitas. It was delicious. (laughs) Very cheap as well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I remember seeing a video of the um. So so what's the the leader called? Is there a name for for the leader? Is it like it's not like a mayor, right? The the, the name for the, the the person who's like. Yeah, well, well, no, there, there there's not one leader. Oh, there's there not just, one. The, yeah, there's there's a mayor council. I see. And, and everything every time the council wants to do something, they go and ask the people mm. like, hey, we're, we ha- we plan to do this. Are you OK with this? This is going to be the cost. Um, if you have a better uh, idea for solving this situation, mm. you can just let, let us know. And these far things have been going great for them. I mean, like it, it's it's I, I, I don't even know what kind of how to call this kind of organization because, well, it's not imposing it. It's not government. Man. Right, right. Because government just imposes. Right, by force, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so I was watching, I saw a video and, and um, I don't know, so, somebody in that council or maybe, yeah, some, somebody like that was saying uh, about the crime rates um, in, in Chiran is very, very low, right? Like like violent, violent crimes and thefts and, you know, things like that, right? Yeah, they told us they have been getting uh, this, past four years the only problem i believe they had i mean like when it comes to actual violence between one human and well two humans or more yeah it was just a drunk fight from a party <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and uh, the main issue they have right now is uh, just some kids breaking windows and like the town uh, drunkies, you know, there are just like five of them roaming around town just being drunk and I yeah. think that's it. But there's no murder, there, there's no uh, robbery, there's nothing bad going on, man. I mean, like, I felt pretty safe inside of that town, I'm telling you. 
So okay, so um, s since there's no official like central um, institution of power, so then there's no laws as we would know them. So so like, how would you say? Mm, let's say like, what's what's the the incentive for people not to be violent? You know what I mean? Like like most people think the incentive yeah. in a, in a state society is because they're going to go to prison if they're violent, right? So what's the incentive for people there not to be violent? Or is it just that? pretty much everybody understands what common morality <laughs> like a normal person <laughs> <laughs> well yeah actually yeah they, they they're pretty much aware that well it's not good to hurt someone else <laughs> right and besides like uh, if someone wants to scam someone else uh, like their reputation is in place i mean like if you want to scam someone in there mm. everyone's gonna know that and nobody will ever want to make a deal with you so i think there are some rules but they just got organically established mm. by common sense you know yeah. um, not imposed yeah that, yeah that sounds very much like um yeah when we talk about polycentric legal systems as opposed to you know state-run courts you know because people think that we need the state to lay down the law and also state courts whereas in the past it was more like you said organically spontaneously ar uh, uh, arisen um, um, codes of conduct you know about how people how people should act and, and what's fair right and, and then and, and and because you know you had you know there's always different judges that, that you know there was not one judge there was the state judge and that you had to bow down to him there was different judges and so each of them you know, kind of over time made their own separate, um, unique, um, I guess, way of arbit arbitrating um, disputes. And so over time, you know, th these norms, you know, ways that people should act developed, but not because, you know, one government institution laid down the law. So like, it kind of reminds me, reminds me of that, you know, something that happens over time organically, right? Would you, would you yeah. say that, that's similar? Yeah, I, I think that's, totally the situation in there because there are no there's like basically no law enforcement because it's not necessary right um well the the only uh, they have some security like um personal in there which is also voluntary but it's just for protecting the forests and like taking care of well not letting cartel inside of the town again mm. um but that's pretty much it so, so they don't consider themselves part of Mexico at all. Yeah, well, they consider that they consider themselves Mexicans, but even though they, if they think if they see themselves as Mexicans, they 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 still know that there's something going on not only in this country, man, in several other countries as well, mm. and that big problem is. Uh, government and, and how well not only government how how media is is like brainwashing people they, they're telling me they, they they come to cities to like morelia or another city close by called Uruapan, and sometimes they think people is just kind of like a little bit delusional you know mm. and uh i i don't want to know that what they could think if they go to the u.s or, <laughs> or Euro, western europe or something you know man well how much um like how much exposure do they have of technology? Like like how connected are they to the internet and to the outside world, things like that? Well, yeah, they're connected. Um, they have a four G network in there. Okay. Uh, only only for one phone company. So if you don't have that phone company, you're not gonna have connection. Okay. <laughs> but they they have like these small uh, like places called uh, Cibers, and there's like a lot of computers there, and they just go there to check their email and stuff. Mm -hmm. But well, there's also some kids with, with their phones, you okay. know, but not not that much actually, because they don't buy like big fancy phones like everyone nowadays. Mm. Because well, they have better things to do, you know, play outside basically. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so okay, so so tell me a little bit about the uh, the documentary that uh, that Chris is making, uh, the Anarcho Apocalypse documentary. Yeah, well, well, that that's that's super interesting, man. Um, because, well, I I wasn't planning to be a part of the documentary, but basically his documentary is mostly about how well the idea of anarchism could take over, you know. And uh, well, he told me also that there was a mis misconception of what the word apocalypse meant. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah uh, another misconception again. 
but it, it was basically just about how things could change and how could they and well how could the outcome be uh, anarchy basically because well the, there are like self-destructive ideals when it comes to a social organization that's based on well that is basically that's the state you know right so it's kind of like something like that um the term's kind of complex i don't really remember that but what um what what happened well um, is that i was just supposed to like translate for him but somehow i ended up like being the you know the guy who's the, the how do you say it in english the guy who's just explaining everything on camera and on the, documentary. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the narrator the narrator yeah 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 the, yeah, the narrator <laughs> and, like I, uh, I didn't sign up for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it somehow happened, and oh man, the translations, they were hard. Luke was making an interview with one of the elders. Uh. Uh, he was an academic, so he was just telling us, that she was telling us the story of the town and everything, mm. and he was talking really fast, man, and oh. saying a lot of words. I told him, like, just say small sentences, and I'll, then I'll just translate them. Right. Yeah, he didn't do it. He, he, he got into his talk, and uh, I was trying to stop him, but he was like, I mean, like he was very, very passionate about what he was talking about. That was right. awesome, right? But Wait, it was kind of hard for me to translate. Yeah. So, so you said he was an intellectual. What was his specialty? Uh, he went to the to this university called UNAM. That's in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. He studied indigenous. Um, well, he's, he it's a, it's a like well in Mexico it's called licenciatura, which is like the equivalent to the degree, I guess. Mm. And it was on uh, indigenous towns, basically. Okay. Sure. And, and and so, do these people? If you were to ask them, uh, the people who live in Chilean, would you say that they do they call themselves anarchists? Do they consider themselves anarchists, or, or they, they they don't learn, like identify with that word at all? Um, I don't think they they identified themselves with that word. But if you explain to them what it really is, I'm pretty sure they would because they're just people that that's very grounded, man. Right. Uh, they're very down to earth. So they know that in order to have the, their life in order, um, they have to be like responsible with themselves, work hard, and also don't mess with others because mm. that has consequences. Right. So you can do something that has good consequences or you can just do something that has, well, bad consequences of course and they they actually question a lot when uh when you try to like impose something to them you know because we are also staying next to this little school at the hotel Mm -hmm. and we man i was listening to everything that was coming out of the classroom and it's basically what i told you would happen to me man um there's this bad um like habit teachers have that they just want they just want kids to do things. There could be a reason for that. There could not be a reason for that. But well, I mean, like you gotta let them know. Otherwise, they're not gonna listen. And some kids are gonna say like, uh, Nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> then yeah. But like grown ups nowadays, I mean, like uh, they're just used to you know obeying. Mm-hmm. But like people in Chadan somehow they just you tell them like, Hey, could you do this? And they could be like. Um, why <laughs> you know <laughs> i see yeah you know when 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 we talk about um or you know when i talk about this idea of stateless societies and you know we we criticize the state and all of its actions and the money printing and the wars and all that and 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 a lot of people will accept that there are problems with the state um but they wouldn't accept the idea that we don't need the state at all like a lot of people are afraid of that of that idea um and and there's this um this this uh saying that um you know the devil that you know is not as bad as the devil you don't know right oh, <laughs> so so people that's are a good saying man right so people are willing to accept even though the state is violent and does uh violate you know um people's property rights and people's uh you know bodies and things they're willing to accept it because the they they always think that the alternative is even must be even worse right um and um and i think it's our job as as anarchists and volunteers to say that um 
Of course there's a better way. What are you talking about? You think the only way yeah. to fund a road is to steal from people? Is that the only way that <laughs> flat surfaces can be made? Like, it's so ridiculous, this idea. You know, like, uh, like uh, this is one cartoon I love. You know, you see, you see aliens that are leaving Earth. They just visit Earth, and, and one alien says to the other oh, yeah. alien, is like, is like they, they're stealing money from each other, and they're patting themselves on the back that they're so civilized. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. so so yeah so like what i'm saying is that some of them say you know okay if if you're saying stateless society if that's what we should be why hasn't there been one yet you know or you, you know give me an example right and on the one hand it shouldn't matter if there was an example or not right it's like it's like um you know people with cord phones you know and then and then and then Steve Jobs comes along and says, "I have this idea that we make cordless phone, you know, a smartphone." And they're like, "No, no, 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 no! Show me an example of a of a cordless phone, and I'll believe you that you can make cordless phone." <laughs> and of course, there is no example, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. Yeah. Right. And and the same thing with 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 chain slavery, right? When abolitionists in the 19th century said, "You know what? Maybe we should do away with chain slavery." Because it's horrible way to treat people, and we shouldn't control and enslave people. They're like, well, show me a society that doesn't have slavery, and you would be it would be very difficult to show you because at that time probably every society had slavery. But the, still, that doesn't justify slavery. <laughs> so, so that's the thing, right? I mean, like, there's there's some kind of attachment to to all the ideas. To yeah. ideas that just don't work, man. Yeah. And I think I think the camp that well, there there's there's something going on. I mean, like. There, there's some people who's who's aware of better solutions or, or better ways, you know. But a huge problem I've been seeing you. Uh, this is the thing I wanted to talk to you about. Is that well? So there's people who's aware of how things could be, you know, better. But of course, there's people who's who. Who doesn't? I mean, like big statists, uh, the left, you know, uh, social justice warriors, for example, and they they do a thing that's just not improving the situation, man. They're just um, ridiculing them or you know attacking them and you know making fun of them and stuff. And this this you I mean, like you know, these people is like easily offended. So offending easily offended people is just gonna end up in one thing, man violence and right. you have seen the streets in the u.s you have seen the things in europe man mm. how people react to like um yeah i don't know these kind of trigger things and stuff <laughs> triggers <laughs> right yeah <laughs> man and, and i mean like it, it, it's I, I gotta admit it, it's tough to not make fun of these guys uh, they, <laughs> they, yeah it's really hard trust me it's really hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah man because it's it's ridiculous but the thing is i, I think we should just approach them from uh, uh, we, we just ha from a different way, you know, we just have to make a different approach, because well, in the very end, I just wonder how do these people feel, man? I mean, like they're not free. Uh, most of the guys I've met from the far left, they're like constantly depressed. Mm. They're full of hate. Mm. So, gee, I wouldn't like to have a life like that, man. And I don't want to imagine how does it feel to just live like that all of the time right. so they're just pretty disturbed people man <laughs> and yeah it's 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 awful what's going on i mean like very manipulated and indoctrinated into believing that only one thing can happen mm -hmm. so i guess the solution would would be just to approach them um and like offer them to put into perspective that Probably the things they believe to be true are not or are incorrect mm. or they're not the best things to do. Right. I mean, like, you know, I don't know. What do you think, man? So, so um, people people rejected monarchy, right? They're like, it's horrible to have one person in charge, right? And then you mm. had you, then you had like Plutarchy or aristocracy, and you're like, oh no, no it's horrible to have a. A, a, a group, a small group of people in charge. And then they're like, okay, maybe represent democracy, right? Democracy. But the problem with that is now everybody has the incentive through government to try to control their neighbor, right? Through voting, yeah. you try to vote and force your neighbor 
through voting for a particular politician to get your way, right? So in that way, everybody becomes a mini dictator <laughs> <laughs> over each other, right? And and just like you said, you know, they seem very angry and frustrated and resentful and depressed. I can imagine. That's understandable if you're always trying to control people. Of course, you're going to be frustrated and resentful. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's <laughs> like you're, you're trying to control your neighbor. He's trying to control you. That's a horrible existence. <laughs> it is, man. And, and you know, well, they need they need to be aware of that because I'm mean, like, if you want to control someone against that someone's interests, uh, well, things are not going to end up the way you want. So yeah, I agree with you with that one, man. Um, yeah, the outcome is not going to please them. I mean, like quite the opposite, actually. Yeah, and and you know, I tell people that um, to me, what anarchism is and volunteerism is basically, I explain to people that it's individual responsibility. It comes down to you. Forget about everyone else. I don't care. I don't care if my neighbor is a serial rapist and a murderer. I don't care. All, all I can control is myself, right? I can't control my neighbor. I can't control my village. My you know, I can't control anybody. <laughs> I can bear. Most people can barely control themselves. <laughs> actually, forget about controlling yourself. Most people can barely control themselves. Like people have addictions and people, <laughs> people have problems themselves. So, can you imagine people who can't even control their own bodies and their own desires, trying to control other people's bodies and desires? Like, I don't even understand that. So, so it's like if you really want to improve the world, forget about everyone else. Focus on yourself first. Just make yourself a a human being that other people want to emulate and that other people want yeah. to respect and admire, right? And if you do that, I think you're automatically making the world a better place. Forget about everyone else. Yeah. Just work on yourself. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you're completely right. I mean, like, people is not – most people is not aware of that. Um, I mean, like, that if they don't take care of themselves, if they lie, if they steal, um, if they're responsible, they're delivering they're, – they're, they're delivering – a uh, very bad individual to society, man. Mm. And the, uh, I mean, like the, the outcome of that's not gonna be nice, you know. It's gonna cause a lot of negative things. And, but there, there's a lot of people who's like that, and they claim to be socialists or communists, and they want to save the world, and they want uh, equality, and <laughs> they think they're gonna achieve like you know, happiness for everyone through that. Right. But. Jesus Christ, man! Have you seen their lives, man? The way they live—it's—it's right. it's even disgusting, man. They—they they don't even shower. <laughs> so, if they don't shower, what does that tell you about someone, man? I mean, like, I don't want a society full of those guys. You know? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. And and the same thing, I think um, you can draw a parallel to uh, being a parent. You know, H how difficult yeah. do you think it is to control your child? You know, most kids. Um, you know, when they're young, they resist getting controlled. Most kids, you know, some kids, I guess, have more of a submissive nature. But, you know, in the beginning, they'll probably resist. And then maybe over time, the more you beat them, the more you yell at them and shout at them, maybe they're going to bend. Most most kids will bend. There are a very small exception of kids will continue to resist into adulthood with that kind of uh, treatment. But, yeah, it's not easy even to control your own kids. And you can see, yeah. you can see how... Most people want to be free. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be controlled and manipulated in how they think, right? Most, um, yeah. most kids, I think, resist being in government, government schools. You know, but, um, but I, go ahead. I, I think something that, that needs to, to, I mean, like even in, in parenthood or whatever it is, I mean, like if, if, if you let a kid do whatever he wants, he's never going to learn. I mean, like he's going to learn about life, but with consequences right so I think uh, the best thing is to let them know what the consequences of their acts will be I don't that's how that's what my how my father was with me you know he told me like all right man um if you do this you help people you're honest um, you work hard you will do good but if you don't if you like go out to party or you lie or like you try to hurt someone else you're not gonna have a nice time mm, right and well I mean like you can see that everywhere good examples and bad examples you can see them so well i guess i mean like you don't have to impose things on people especially kids yeah yeah and i think the value of um 
of a parent's advice you know it, it shouldn't rely on brute force and strength and punishing your child it should rely on you know the wisdom that you've acquired over the years from living on the earth and you know so the value should be inherent in the advice that you give your child so if if they feel like you know you tell them something and then they find that out to be true then they're going to respect you even more right because yeah. they they see that what you're saying is true you don't have to force them to to believe it they see <laughs> that it's true right <laughs> yeah 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 well and i and i wonder there might be some people thinking like but what if they are like hyperactive or they just won't shut up or, or calm down or something. Right. right. And, uh, well, I guess you should, you should, I mean, like there, there should be a way to calm uh, kids down. I mean, like if, if I want to calm down, I just breathe. Right. Maybe kids could do yeah. the same thing. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's many, many ways to do it. Like, um, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to claim that I never raise my voice with my kids. Like, <laughs> I'm not perfect. <laughs> Definitely not. But I'm always trying. And, you know, if I do do stuff like that, like raise my voice, you know, I do apologize, you know. Um, uh, but we don't really, like, punish much. Like, we don't, you know, definitely no, no you know, physical physical punishment. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I try to talk to my kids. You know, I consider myself like an advisor, like a friend, you know, and somebody that they can come to for advice, right? I'm not going to – I'm not an authority figure. I'm not telling them what to do or forcing them to do something. You know, my kids are eight and six. So, you know, maybe it's different when they're like one, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and they might walk into the road. That's a little bit different. But now they're eight and six. So they understand things a lot better. And so I can begin to have conversations with them explaining the consequences of certain actions and they understand it and that's wonderful because you know the, the one thing like we understand you know you you say um i ask people how do how do you teach kids how to speak by speaking <laughs> by speaking to them that's how you teach them how to yeah, speak. Yeah, how do you yeah. teach them how to walk <laughs> by by walking showing them how to walk right how do you teach them anything by doing right and so the same thing if you want your kids to reason and to learn to use their brain and logic then you should demonstrate that and you should reason with them and use logic yourself rather than just telling them because I told you or forcing them to do something or else they'll get punished, right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's better to, to lead your kids by example. I mean, like, I don't have any kids, man. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about it, but, well, I just want to go through common sense, I guess. But I mean, like going back to what I was telling you, I think the individual is the basis of a healthy society. And that's that's something that was uh, remarked in one of Charan's like um, ideals, mm. because they even showed us this graph that was kind of like, um, you know, how do you call the shape of a hurricane? That's a spiral. Spiral, right, right. So they showed us this spiral and at the center of the spiral, there was the word individual, then uh, family, then uh, neighbors, community, and then society. Mm. So they told us that they were basing their way, of, their way of living on the individual. Wow, very nice. <laughs> very that's powerful a, stuff, that's awesome, man. That's and, awesome. I love yeah. it. <laughs> and people need to get that, you know? Yeah. And that's the reason, I mean, uh, we're making a lot of noise about Charan because... They are a leading example, yeah. you know, yeah. and that, that is very, very, very needed nowadays, especially with everything that's going on in people's heads. And I think, yeah. No, I was just going to say, my, you were just reminding me of one of my favorite quotes by Confucius, um, old uh, Chinese philosopher. He said, if you want to improve the world, improve the country. If you want to improve the country improve your city you want to improve the city improve your town you want to improve the town improve your family and if you want to improve your family improve yourself <laughs> yes so it always comes yes. down to the self always <laughs> it doesn't matter what you want to do in life <laughs> Does, you know it always comes back to you right <laughs> yeah man and oh my god and i was getting a lot of fire from a comment i made on facebook uh, i have this friend who lives in mexico city but she's from the u.s and um, but, well, she's very, like, liberal and statist and stuff, so she had a very bad reaction with this Kavanaugh thing, I guess. I don't know a lot about it because I don't care. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> 
But the thing, I mean, like she was, she she, she quoted, um, no, 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 she she not she didn't quote. Uh, she she wrote above her post. Uh, this is a horrible world. Men are awful and stuff. And I just told her, if you stay away from politics and other people's lives, it's not gonna be so bad. <laughs> right. Jesus, man. So this is a liberal girl on Facebook. She has a lot of liberal friends as well. So I got a lot of fire for that, you know. Yeah. There was a guy convincing me that uh, I should vote and stuff, that uh, yeah. I should be responsible <laughs> with my civil duties. <laughs> and I asked him, like, what's being responsible for you and what are civil duties for you? Mm -hmm. Dude, and he told me, all these questions are based on your indoctrination to reject uh, a helpful... I'm like, dude... What the hell are you talking about, man? I'm just asking you, what do you mean by stuff? And that's it. But he, right. went, he didn't even want to reply that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently I was the indoctrinated one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Your, uh, yeah, your friend, uh, the, the woman, when she said, uh, you, you said she said, um, all men are evil or something, or what's wrong with all men? You, you should have sent her, you should have sent her a story about like a, you know, I don't know, a woman who did a horrible thing. And then say all women are evil, and then <laughs> and, and then she'll say, "Wait, what? No, not all women. I'm a good person." And then you say, "Exactly. Yeah, not, not all women. Some women are evil, and some men are evil. Okay, stop generalizing." <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's the thing, and, and and there's actually something going on. I mean, like everyone's taking sides, you know. Feminists, they claim like, yeah, we want to protect women and stuff, and uh, you know, social justice warriors, they want to protect like Jesus. Or, well, Black Lives Matter, they want to protect bad black people or right, whatever. Right, right, right. But the thing is, if you want to help someone, wait, don't you just like help everyone, whoever it is, and just don't discriminate based on if it's a woman or a man or like right. white, black, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I. Um... Yeah, I had a friend that tried to convince me that I'm an anarchist. Uh, sorry, that I'm a fe feminist. Um, she, she asked me, she is a feminist, and she said, uh, she said, are you a feminist? And I said, well, I I think all people should be free, and I don't really discriminate against it. She's like, you're a feminist. I'm like, wait, what? What? No, <laughs> no, I, I, no. If I if I had to say exactly what you know, I'm I'm a you know I'm for black freedom and for white freedom for hispanic freedom for women freedom and for you know that, that that list would be too long so it's just simple to say i'm an anarchist and a voluntarist and and i think <laughs> everybody should be free so why do, <laughs> why are you gonna single out one group of people you know what i mean <laughs> yeah 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 they don't seem to get that man everyone everyone nowadays is so obsessed with ideas and uh political affiliations and stuff and i do remember man like in 2008 no, it, it was not like that. People were like more, in, in, in my experience here in Mexico, mm -hmm. people were more like chilled, you know. And Mexicans in general, they're chilled and they don't get, get involved so much mm -hmm. unless you go to Mexico City, Guadalajara or Monterrey, which are the big cities. Mm -hmm. And they want to like follow the trend. Wow. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, like it's pretty stupid to follow a political trend because if you have a political affiliation, you should have a reason and you shouldn't do it just to follow a stupid trend. <laughs> right. But well, that, that's another story, man. But anyway, I was telling you, 2008, things were chilled out. I mean, like, everyone was minding their own business. Facebook wasn't radicalizing everyone. Right, or, right. like, social media in general. And uh, that same vibe, I perceived, uh, like, in those years, that same vibe was the same, the same vibe I perceived in Charan. Because mm. everyone was just minding their own business um the 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 town doesn't have a lot of resources so they, have, so they don't have a lot of access to technology they do have some smartphones and stuff but like i told you everyone's just mm. you know doing, doing their job or like i don't know just going to their school or playing with their friends or just having fun man <laughs> you know everyone just in their own thing yeah and that was that yeah, one of my favorite uh, memes uh, says, um, anarchists or volunteers are trying to take over the world to leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, we kind of are. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like people, people saying, say, stop trying to force your anarchism on me <laughs> or your volunteerism on me. <laughs> it's like, wait, what, what, who's forcing who? Wait, wait, what's going on? I'm not using any, uh, I'm not using any uh, institution of power behind my words. Uh, 
you are i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's it's funny um it's kind of like a paradox right the, yeah <laughs> it, it's a part that summer kissing is going through right now i guess Shit. Yeah. More, 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 more things to think about. You gotta, you gotta stop forcing, stop forcing your anarchism on people, Roy. Okay, just, just calm down, relax. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're okay, you're, I'll, you're I'll, making, you make all this talk of freedom. You're making people uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Then I'll just talk about gulags or communism. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah. Um, so maybe we'll, uh, we'll finish up. Uh, with maybe if you can mention the uh, your contact information once again um so yeah. people can contact you if they want to find out uh, more about this topic yeah uh you can find me on facebook as roy duarte just look like look it like that and on instagram r-o-y-c-n-u-f and i will try to reply to you as soon as possible if you send me a message so, um, do you know the status of Anarchopocalypse? Like, uh, what's his, what's his projected time that he, he's trying to get it uh, released by? Uh, we, well, the plan is, if everything's going according to plan, which I think it will, is to uh, make the premiere on February on Anarchapulco. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, yes, that, well, that's the plan. Yeah. Wow, that'd be really cool. <clears throat> Very cool. Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully I can get him on too. That'd be, that'd be great. Um, cool. So another thing I asked my guests before we go is, um, what is your favorite quote of all time? <laughs> okay. That's, that's a tough one, man. It's like when you ask a guy, like, what's your favorite song or, or your favorite movie? <laughs> but, well, I can think of a quote, um, from Buddhism actually, which is if you wanna enlighten uh, everyone, you should. I mean, like if you wanna enlighten everything within everyone, you should first enlighten everything within yourself. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Buddhism. Um, yeah, yeah. That's another another uh, philosophy that I, I mean, I like the Eastern philosophy in general. I'm. Uh, I like Taoism because uh, I, you know, I practice Chinese medicine. I'm an um, acupuncturist and Chinese herbalist. And when I was in high school, I studied on my own, independent of government school. I studied Taoism and I loved it. And later, I learned that voluntarism has a lot of parallels to Taoism, in the sense of duality and balance yes. and yin and yang. And you know, and so a lot of people have said that Lao Tzu, who's the Chinese philosopher that wrote the book Tao Te Ching, which Taoism is based on was the first um, anarchist or libertarian <laughs> five like five thousand years ago. Which is okay, I'm, I'm I'm gonna research that man. It sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's really awesome. Taoism. T. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, either, either spelled T A O I S M or I S M. Yeah, or D A O. Taoism or Taoism. Taoism. Yeah, really cool, really cool uh, Chinese philosophy, and um, yeah, it's beautiful. And I, I think uh, very similar to voluntarism in so many ways. Um, awesome, awesome conversation, uh, Roy. I really appreciate yeah. you coming on. Um, this is a wonderful topic. I hope people have learned a little bit about it and will research it. And um, and yeah, and uh, I'll put the uh, the link for the Patreon for um, Anarch Apocalypse if people want to donate and um, and help it out, <clears throat> help make it a a reality. That would be awesome. So uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for coming on the show, Roy. Um, so Thank you, man. Thank you. No problem. Um, so this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theconsciousresistance.com and solpodcast.org. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and voluntarism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. 
if you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.